Electrifying Mojo on 92.3 The Mix Tonight after 11 o'clock we will continue our tribute to Dr. Alex Haley We interrupt this program to bring you this special segment Dr. Alex Haley's best friend growing up as a child who is now the mayor of Henning, Tennessee. And he's on the line with us now to share some deeper insight into the man, Alex Haley. On the phone line right now, Mayor Fred Montgomery from Henning, Tennessee, the hometown of Alex Haley. Mayor Montgomery? Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to... uh, talk to you tonight and uh, I um, know that you had a long day and you were nice enough to uh, talk to us live on the telephone tonight and uh, share some uh, uh, moments with us uh, regarding uh, Dr. Alex Haley. Yes. You you uh, were best friends growing up as a child in Henning, Tennessee. Can you tell us what was he like as a child? When I first saw Alex Haley, it was before his grandpa died, before he was five years old. The house was in process and uh, uh, nearly completed and following my mom by there for a distance toward Henning, I was a little boy myself, there I saw Alex, a little plump, clean, boy with cute little shoes on and socks and because we were very poor and they were that was very uh noticeable to me and we didn't say much he was a quiet kind of little boy and we just looked at each other a lot and and just a little just a little hint here and there to uh show good relationship uh and then uh later by my parents and alex's parents been friends, then I could get the permission to go play with Alex more. Alex was just quiet, uh, giving of himself or his things with others he shared with because I, I was from a poor family and Alex wasn't uh, uh, of that. Uh, his parents were better off financially. And Alex would even as a little boy would share his little wine suckers with us and let us lick on them as we grew up. And he had pets when we didn't have, but he was the kind that would, would, would give back to you, even from a kid. And he seemed to be a, a child that was very obedient. He felt good, seemingly, in trying to please Grandma and do the things that Grandma wanted him to do and follow his teacher's instruction. He was a, a ferocious reader for a little boy. Uh, read everything and then he always kept her ear open for what grandma said it seemed like he was just obsessed with that feeling and I never at that time we never thought in terms of a child being anything maybe but a school teacher or something of that sort but we know Alex had some kind of a rarity uh, he, he, he never was quite uh, the free player that we were. He would sometimes stop and we'd be in the midst of a big wrestling and, and Alex would be seemingly looking in the trees, uh, just gazing in the trees. I guess then that's when that thing was working on him, that one day he would take what he heard from Grandma and, and start checking back and and, and researching back and and I think he was a his life was a a life filled. One thing I would like to say, Alex was the kind of a man that that uh, uh, loved people so much that he gave up himself back. He was always giving and pushing himself to to to, to make things better. I feel like that every every man that that would uh, ever heard him talk, ever read his book, had to look back from somewhere he 
where he came from. And the thing about the black man, one of the things that that uh, it did for me and that that book, and yet uh, I knew all about it before it was published because we were friends and he would come to my house on an house and that was great with me. And then he would talk about that book. But that book made me, when it came out, that it made me understand that as a black man that uh, I was from somewhere. It made me feel like that I was somebody. Now, this book came out before you ran for mayor of Henning, Tennessee. That is correct, yeah. Um, did that have anything to do with you deciding to uh, be the mayor of your city? No, no, no. Uh, 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 I had a, uh, a yard and we had a street called the Colored Lane, which I actually now we, we would play on sometimes. And and it was it was a bad need of sanitation. It was all black. And and I couldn't get any uh, better to hear my plea if I didn't hold the title. And I ran for mayor so I could uh, uh, be heard. I mean, I mean, I ran for all of them. Uh, but uh, 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 after being Alderman 16 years or more, and one day Alex and I were on a trip to Belgium, England, and and my wife and my son had always uh, asked me to run for mayor and then Alex uh, said uh, uh, just out from somewhere he said oh buddy that's what we call when he called me that he said why don't you run for mayor and through my wife and through my son and some others I wanted to do it because uh, at that time it was not I didn't know of a black mayor in the state of Tennessee. I think I'm the first. I know I'm the first in West Tennessee. But it was because I wanted, and I guess I I got some of that self-esteem uh, because of the condition I had in growing up with addicts and people like him. We're speaking with Mayor, Mayor Fred Montgomery, the mayor of Henning, Tennessee, the hometown of Alex Haley, who grew up with Alex Haley uh, as a child. They were best friends growing up as a child. And uh, it was reported to me that Alex Haley uh, loved to write while out on a ship. And when he got ready to go out there on that ship, he would uh, call his best friend to come take a boat ride with him. Didn't make any difference where he was going. Uh, he just wanted to take a long ride. Could you talk about that? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, there were especially three of us. George, Sam, around Henning we called him Jake. And around Henning we called Alex Palmer. Palmer? Palmer instead of Alex. Okay. Because his grandparents wanted some of that name in there and everybody called him Palmer. And didn't many people know him as Alex until the book came out. And then we had to go back and and re uh, tell them that this was the same. But when I well, I like to write on water for some reason, I don't know. It seemed to uh, uh, gel best in his mind. And he would find out a ship going wherever, just so it was going to be going a month or more. And uh, there were times he would, uh, he and his was a friend George, George wrote more than I did. And uh, they would, we three would go. And the book of Henning uh, I was put together out there with Joyce Sims, Fred Montgomery, and Alec. And we would talk and hours and hours and reminisce over the past. And then Alec would sit up uh, after 10 o'clock and tell us to go to bed. And he would write all night long. And, 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 and we'd have to wake him up to eat. Uh, and then he would, he was so uh, determined to stay with that, we had to put pillars on him to sit on and pillars behind his head and pillars for his feet. And he would continue to write. And that's where, uh, if something happens out there in the water, 
just seems like that it encourages him to, to uh, write better. You were often worried about Alex Haley because of the hectic schedule that he tried to keep up. Yes, uh, uh, there were some years when I would, uh, we would be together and just I don't know where uh, we got to talk about his tight schedule. It was in February, only 28 days. And I somehow another found out that he had 31 speaking engagement in 31 different cities. And I would complain to him. I said, I wouldn't let nobody book me that tight. But I would give his last bit of energy and strength to make somebody happy. And he said, oh, buddy, I'll make it somehow. It looked like if it had been in one city, someone been doing but he had to take a flight from one city to the other. And it worried me. I thought he pushed himself. But I think Alex had a life to live in a certain amount of years. I feel like that God has decided that Alex has done his work as far as living. But Tell me. a man that gave back to the poor. He loved him. He loved me. I told him one time, I said, it is like Christ said, greater love has no man than this. And he loved people. He, he loved people struggling. And, and he loved that little town so that one day uh, uh, back here around 1st of September, he, he called me and I picked him up at the plane station and brought him into my home and put him in the bed. And then after that, we got up and we talked. And my son was here because he's writing a book on my life. And we, we spent hours and hours with my wife at the museum uh, working on this book. And we began to talk about, for the first time, he talked about where he wanted to be buried. Out of all these years, we never mentioned that. And then he told me that he wanted to come home and live the balance of his life out. But he wanted to be buried in the front yard of the museum. And I had already been working on it. Because he didn't ask much of anybody for himself. But he would be, we were willing to give all. And he could make you look like, or somebody else around him, look like they were the uh, star or celebrity. So uh, he's going to be buried in the front yard of a museum? That's correct. That's uh, unprecedented, isn't it? It is. Uh, that okay. is very unusual around here. Uh, what what museum is this? Is that the Haley Museum? The, See, uh, the Haley Museum. Yeah, we have a, a Alex Haley Museum. The house that that he he grew up in, his grandpa built years ago, and and the house that he loved so well. And later, he came back and repossessed that house, and then uh, sold it to the state, and they spent something around two hundred thousand dollars and put it back exactly like it was. Really? And when we have a music film here going day after day, and people come here from all over the world already. Really? That's correct. Uh, I've had 32 African students at one time from 16 different tribes in Africa. And we have people from, you name it, we've had them. So the museum is open every day? That's correct. Could I get the phone number to the museum? The phone number is 738-2240. I, I also, I, I am the interpreter there. Oh, uh, really? Yes, I, I, I tour people. And the thing about it, when uh, being there and being a part of the past, and knowing without having to be told, even read, it, 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 it's, it's a thing that, uh, People never get when we are because of the past we talked about. Sometimes people 
scream and tears running down their face as they we go through and not interpret what happened in these rooms. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. And it. Being in that you grew up at uh, Alex and uh, affectionately called Palmer. Yeah. And um, you spent much of your childhood together, caring about each other, sharing what you had, and being good friends. And you remained good friends uh, throughout your adult life. And... Um, What will it, have you thought about what it will be like being at that museum after Saturday? No, no. Uh, somehow or another, even when the phone rang and the news uh, came and my wife answered the phone, and when she told me Alex was dead, I was like a piece of wood. I didn't feel nothing in four hours. The phone rang 40 times, for sure. And then finally, when the uh, television reporters pulled in down at my office in City Hall, and then they asked me to go to the museum, and that's when my feeling came back. And it was like a knife lodged into my chest. I knew then I had, and hit and had lost. A son, a brother, and a friend, and 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 I just can't imagine how I feel. But one thing about it, when I get through it, I'll be proud to be one that had shared his love and a part of his greatness because he gave back even to me. Uh, uh, I think I, I, it'll be some joy also, being a godly person like I am, uh, to uh, say that the Lord gave me a chance to be a part in his life and to grow up with him and receive some of his greatness as he loved me as a brother and one that I witness that can say. I think there'll be some pride in it. I know it will. We're talking with Mayor Fred Montgomery, the mayor of Henning, Tennessee, the hometown of Alex Haley. And as children, uh, Mayor Montgomery and Alex Haley played together, grew up together, became adults uh, together. Uh, while writing uh, the book, Roots, uh, he would sometimes call his friend, uh, say, let's go take a, a long trip on a slow boat going nowhere. I got to do a little writing. And he sought out the company of his friend, George Sims, me and Fred Montgomery and Alex Haley, and they set sail. It's been my pleasure to talk to you, uh, Mayor Montgomery, and um, I know this is uh, not a good time for you, but to have shared uh, uh, special moments with uh, a son of the world must be something very, very special. It is. It is. It is. I feel blessed. I feel blessed. One that has shared much of the joy and, and the history and the knowledge he had, he pour out and the love. Now, we we had. Uh, I'm looking at a picture right here of uh, of Chicken George that um, Sister Will Ada Curry uh, had. And that she had uh, given this picture to uh, Dr. Haley. Um, 
Do you have any memories of Chicken George? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I don't have any memories, even of Tom. That was too far back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one man alive in Henning, and he's 90 odd years old that can remember Tom Murray only as an old man. Mm -hmm. Nothing but just an old, old man. Mm -hmm. I remember Will Palmer. Uh, uh, I remember him very well. And from Will Palmer down uh, up, whichever you might call it, I remember them well. Okay, Will Palmer was his grandfather, right? That's correct. Okay, what kind of man was he? Will Palmer was one of the finest men this town uh, knew of. Will was a man that was so ultimately respected among black and white. And when most times when Will Palmer spoke, uh, the uh, neighbor would kind of lean back and not encroach upon his being, not his position. And when Will Palmer died, people came to that house, both black and white men and women, in the wake of the news that Will Palmer was dead. Hey, Will Palmer was, uh, and, and my father and, and all, uh, uh, we are members of the same church. And Will Palmer uh, would attend church. It, it, is that the New Hope CME Church? That's correct. Do you remember Sister Will Ada Curry? Yes, very well. Um, uh, she's deceased now, right? That's correct. Okay, now, uh, Alex Haley had said at one point that uh, when he needed a praying woman, he... <laughs> yeah, that's correct. We'd always uh, re reminisce about that. <laughs> when Alex was going uh, to get ready to go to Africa, and he got, I think he called from California. So anyway, he called back Will Ada and told Will Ada, said, now, nah, uh, uh, he was having trouble with enough finance to continue his writing. But he, he sent Will Ella some money and told her, I'm sending you some money and I want you to pray for me. And in a little bit, Will Ella told him, said, you heard him hang up so I can get started right now. And I think as believed that, that Will Ella's Will Ella's, Will Ella's prayer was some of the cushion for him. Yes, she was uh, a beautician by trade. She fixed the women's hair, but she was Alex's pretty mother. Mm -hmm. Now the um, funeral service in Henning will be at the uh, New Hope CME Church uh, this Saturday at uh, 3 o'clock, is, is that, that correct? That is correct, yeah. And we'll, we'll um, so he'll be lying in state uh, prior to 3 o'clock or beginning at 3? Well, beginning at 3. You see, most of the, uh, the film will be in Memphis. And, 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 and the parade will be from Memphis to uh, Henning which would be approximately around 3 o'clock. The body will be taken in the church house where Alex was a little boy. That's the and there will be a small, short service there. And you see, the church and the, and the museum is just a good rock throw for a good uh, ball throw. And uh, then... We will go from there, out in front of the museum, where the bell site here to be. Is, is there a statue of uh, Alex Haley in Henning, Tennessee? There's not a statue. There are some signs and what have you, but not a statue. Not at this point. Yeah, I think the future might bring that.
we've been doing a tribute here in Detroit to uh, Alex Haley for the last uh, four nights, and the response has been unprecedented. It, it has been uh, overwhelming, and I know this is just one little small corner of the world. Uh, Alex Haley roamed the entire world, and he was a son of the world, and... Uh, I uh, appreciate all of the time that you spent talking to us. Thank you for your time again. Yes, sir. Uh, any parting comments you'd like to make on Alex Haley? Other than I was a role model. And hopefully, and I know that is, there has been many, many people that have been helped and blessed by him. He was one of the greatest of the great. And Henning is gonna know his love as the world know it. Mayor Fred Montgomery, the mayor of Henning, Tennessee, the childhood friend of Alex Haley, with comments on Dr. Alex Haley. Thank you so much, Mayor Fred Montgomery. You're welcome.